up, Aggies? Welcome to Cash Rendezvous. I'm Jessica Black. And I'm Kelsey Keller. We have a great show for you today filled with a little Earth Day lovin' and an ongoing mystery here at ATV that has new developments. The semester may be wrapping up, but there's still a lot of action going around on campus. Speaking of action, Kelsey, are you a Chiragi? I am, actually. Yeah? Is there yeah. like a story behind that or anything? Well, you know, just one time long ago, but not so long ago, I went up with to the A with this guy I kind of liked that was a Chiragi. He made me a Chiragi. And actually, it must have been pretty good because we're married now, so. Nice! Yeah! That's nice, so that's like the prime, like, husband hunting spot, maybe? I, I don't know, I oh, guess okay. so, maybe. But yeah, I might yeah. have to check that out because I, I'm i still single and I'd, I'd like some, maybe some of that action. Maybe it'll work for you, you know? Yeah. True Aggie Day, I'm a firm believer. Yeah, well actually last Friday was the last True Aggie Night of the year and the Student Alumni Association de decided to put a little spin on it. Brianna Bodley shows us why this True Aggie Night was different from all the others. I am a True Aggie. True Aggie! True Aggie! It's just like a tradition at USU. If you're a student here, you should. I've been a Chiragi one time. I think five. Three. Since 1967, students have been meeting here on this A to share a special kiss. But this year's last Chiragi night, the Student Alumni Association brought something new to an age-old tradition, a sponsor. We worked with Kistic so they could sponsor A Day this year. Um, that way they could be participating with uh, Chiragi night tonight. Introducing an outside company had been attempted in the past. Organizers said this is the first time it's really been successful. With music, pictures, and new flavors of chapstick all provided by Kistix, SAA said this time. I loved it. It was, was tons of there was tons of people, which is always great. Kistix was fun. That's just a fun. It, you know, just it's convenient that that works out so well for what we do. Brianna Bodily, Cash Rendezvous. Well, even though the SAA is taking a vacation, True Aggie Night is still valid over the summer. If you and a special someone need a True Aggie card, contact the Alumni Association on campus. You know, it's been so green and pretty outside lately. I am just loving it. I know, it's been really nice. In fact, yesterday it was so nice that I just took, I just grabbed my guitar and I ran out there and I just started playing because I have a guitar final coming up. So, I mean, I guess I didn't really, right. just, you know. Practice. Yeah, I was practicing, really. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was kind of fun because it was just really nice and like all these people were like coming around. I was like, what's up? I'm just playing my guitar. Nice. It's cool. Just yeah. chilling out. Yeah. I wish I would have been there. I would have brought my tambourine. We could yeah, we could nice. have like a jam session. Yeah, yeah, I like that. We should start a band. We should look into that. Yeah. You know, if reporting doesn't work out for us. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm done with that. Yeah. So, Anyways, um, this month has been so nice, and every year on April 22nd, we have the chance to celebrate the green grass of the earth, as well as think about going green. We went downtown last weekend to see what was growing on for Earth Day. If you were downtown last Saturday, you probably heard the beating of drums. The drummers and dancers were just part of the second annual Earth Day Festival in Logan, which invited people from all walks of life to celebrate our Earth. The city of Logan blocked off 100 South and invited one, and all, to come join in the festivities. Kids enjoyed the various activities and had the chance to even get their faces painted, while many adults gathered in the shade to escape the hot sun. The festival was more than just having fun. It was about planting an idea in each community member's mind about how to make our world a better place. Not everybody connects to just recycling and ways to be green and way to conserve and reuse and a lot of people get overwhelmed by it so we wanted to find a way to bridge entertainment and music and art with kind of the concept of Earth Day. And many people did get their message out, whether it was about recycling or about supporting locally grown organic foods and plants. Logan City also brought MeTech to the festival to pick up a few party favors. They're here collecting items uh, like computers, scanners, um, you know, lots of old computer projects, just things that you have lying around, like your, that dead tower of yours that's lying in the corner. They're taking that, and that's a service that the city of Logan hired them today to come in and do. Uh, because there are a lot of people who are just throwing those things away 
and they really do need to be recycled properly. Uh, that's good. You can do it. Who else wants to help plan? People of various ages also took a shovel in hand to help plant new trees on the street to remind us of the changes we can make while working together. You don't have to celebrate the Earth just once a year. Try it every day. USU has its own recycling center as well as a student-run organic farm. Find out more on USU's website. Coming up on Cash Rendezvous, how did contestants stack up? Some made it up to 25 crates. And we'll show you a fun, family-friendly place for all ages. To show off their skills and learn. So Jessica, how many milk crates do you think you could stack on top of each other? Maybe like five or six, you know? Like once it gets too tall, like taller than me, I just, I don't think it would work. That would kind of be a struggle. Yeah. yeah. I might be able to stack them, but I think they'd just fall on top of me or something. That, that would happen to me. Yeah. I'd probably knock them over. But anyways, the Outdoor Recreation Program and DivvyThat.com held the first annual crate stacking competition here on campus. Ryan Humphrey shows you how the competition stacked up. The first annual crate stacking competition was held at the Fieldhouse last Friday night. The competition consisted of people simply stacking crates on top of one another. The catch is, they had to be on top of the crates while they stacked them. While most of the participants were only able to stack a few high, some made it up to 25 crates. The event was in cooperation with an up-and-coming internet site called DivvyThat.com. We had this up here in Logan. This is kind of the Kickstarter for Logan. A website that separates your monthly utility bills among you and your roommates saving you the hassle of getting after them for the monthly bills. It makes it so you don't have to be begging your roommates to pay and like write the check and the late fees. And Divvy That has been working with a few college campuses around Utah. We started kind of south of here in Provo and then Salt Lake, now Logan. And we're going to spread out from there, do most of Utah here shortly and then go across other states. When they told me about the event, um, they offered to let us come and sponsor it. So because we do a lot of video work, we came and put together the promotional video for the event. And often sponsors events like these to help promote their business. Basically an exchange of helping them get the word out about their party in exchange for being here at it and spreading the word about our service. Through events like this, they try to, you know, boost their, I don't know, their name. They get their name out, basically. For being the first time this event was held, they were surprised by the turnout. I thought it would be pretty small, to be honest. I thought it would be a lot smaller, so I thought we did pretty well. I think it'll be a good thing, a good annual tradition. Ryan Humphreys, Cash Rendezvous. There was a great turnout this year, and if you missed it, don't worry. They're planning on bringing it back next year. Thanks, Ryan. So what do you think about rock climbing? You know, that I can do. The Rock House in North Logan creates <laughs> caters to all ages and abilities. Meredith Kinney went there to hang out and chat with some of the climbers. When the Rock House opened five years ago, the climbing culture in Logan exploded. That's when Mike Christensen developed a love for the sport. I, mean, I, I kind of grew up doing it with my family. My dad used to climb a lot, but I just would follow him mostly. And then as soon as this place opened, got hooked, got stoked. Climbers flock to the North Logan gym all year round to show off their skills and learn from others. People of all different levels come to the Rock House to work out and hang out with friends. The climbs cover all difficulties. It starts at a 5-5 and that's pretty much like climbing a ladder pretty much and then it, I think like the highest is something like 514 or 515 or something and that's like really crazy. I think it only goes up to like 513 here. In the winter months, the Rock House keeps climbers in shape and learning new techniques. I just like get depressed if I don't have stuff to do. And in the summer you can go outside, but in the winter you like can keep your skills up and stuff. But the gym is open year round and offers a wide variety of climbs from top roping to lead climbing and even bouldering. Christensen said the gym has brought climbing to the valley. It's, it's something that the valley definitely needed. Meredith Kinney, ATV News. The Rock House is open year round, so if you're interested in into rock climbing, you should check it out. Now let's take a look outside. 
Isn't it beautiful? Look oh, at man, the, the so flowers cool. that are blooming. I'm loving it. So up next, we'll have your five day forecast. The weather has been so nice this past week, and even right now it looks fantastic, but don't let it fool you. If you look up right now, up into the sky, you'll see a couple of really dreary, sad little clouds. Let's see what this means for our five day forecast. Today we have a 20% chance those clouds up there are going to open up and start weeping all over us, but it should stay pretty warm with a high near 77 and a mild low of 49. After today, I can't promise the same mercy. Tomorrow we're looking at a 70% chance of showers and I am not talking baby or bridal showers here. I mean full out bucket loads. So ladies, don't forget your waterproof mascara and men, this would be a great opportunity to share your umbrella with a cute girl. Friday promises rain before lunch and snow after, but considering our crazy weather, you might want to dust off your winter coats for the whole day. Our high is a sad little 53 with a bitter cold 32 expected that night. Saturday, our chance of precipitation moves back to a more comfortable 20%. The high will be a 56 with a low around 34. Finally, Sunday will warm us back up to a breezy 62 with a low of 37. We should see some clouds, but we aren't expecting any rain. It is going to be one wet week. But remember the saying, April showers bring May flowers. I just hope our May flowers aren't washed away. Keep it up, Aggies. Stay tuned for some Aggie sports. Hey Aggies, welcome to your Cash Rendezvous special of ATV Sports. It's our last time airing this year, and even though it should be sad, it's not. I, I know all of us are pumped for summer. We've got a little bit of what's going on in Aggie Sports for you right now, and some of the biggest plays that happened all year. First, the men's tennis team battled to pull out one more win in the end of their season. Romina Nadakovic went to the men's last season match to see if they could come out with a victory. Reno, Nevada served nice weather as the Aggies faced the Nevada Wolfpack. The men's tennis team is here in Reno, Nevada uh, trying to get a win after a tough season thus far. Hopefully, they will come out with the W. Unfortunately, they did not come up with a W. Sven Posolini and partner Marcus Fritz battled against the Wolfpack in doubles, but came up short 8-4. Fritz had to stop playing because he rolled his ankle during doubles. The Whiting brothers had a close match as well, but ended up losing 8-5. The Aggies did win at the number three doubles with Nate Ballum and Brandon Nielsen winning a close 8-7 match. Like doubles, singles was not in the Aggies' favor, but Sven Posolini won a hard-fought match against a ranked player 6-2, 0-6, 6, -2 -0 -6, -6 -2. Definitely really good. I think I played really good. Uh, lost, lost a little bit of momentum in the second set, but uh, bounced back in the third. Freddie Peterson almost took his match to three sets, but lost 6-1, 7-5 while Nate Ballum played the best he could, losing 7-5, 6-2. Freshman Kern Wearmouth tried to make a dent in the match, but ended up losing 6-1, 7-5. Lastly, Lenny Whiting was able to pull off the Aggies' second win, winning his match 6-3, 6-2. Romina Nadakovic, Cash Rendezvous. The final score came down to the Wolfpack winning five matches while the Aggies won two. The next stop for the Aggies is in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where they will be competing for the WAC conference title. Well, it's the end of the year, and I brought some of the best plays of the year for you. The, from Romney Stadium to the men's basketball team locker room, here at Utah State, we live and breathe Aggie athletics. Here are some of the best moments from the 2011-2012 season. First comes football, the Nevada game, my favorite game of the whole season, a pass from Kennedy to Austin, 50 yards, caught like it was no big deal. Next though, my favorite play from Kennedy to Morrison, who looks like he doesn't know what he's doing, but chucks it to Robert Turbin, who bobbles it, but gets the touchdown anyway. This was a huge game for the Aggies because this was the game that brought the winning season to its highest. We actually had a winning score. This is what clinched a possible bowl invitation for us. Next is men's basketball. We can't forget the spectrum. And first one, Stephen Thornton. He didn't stay long with the Aggies, but that dunk was featured on SportsCenter Top 10. 
Just a killer dunk. Next, though, we all know him, Keyshawn Reed. He is known for getting it into that basket. He is the master of dunks in this season. And look at him right here, just throwing it down every single time. He definitely has the most athleticism on the team. But this next dunk is my favorite, where he literally just jumps over that Southern Utah University player. He is definitely going to be a huge threat for the Aggies. And next, backing up Keyshawn, is Preston. Look at his face right there. We love Preston Medlin. He was just named the Athlete of the Year, and he is known for hard play and sacrificing his body for the points. But we all know him for three-pointers. I wanted to put them all in there, but we would have been here for hours. And best thing about Preston is reaction. Look at him freaking out after every single play. He gets the spectrum pumped with his attitude, and we love him for it. But we can't forget Brady Jardine, who ended his season and career here at Utah State. We loved that guy. I know he was one of my favorite players, and I wish I could continue to see him play. I think he will go down in history as one of the best dunkers ever. This year has been a pretty great year for Aggie Athletics. Next year will be even better with a loaded basketball team, a jacked football squad, and other hardworking athletes looking to make our program the best in the state. Aggies, the year of sports has come to an end on the calendar, but it will always live on in our hearts. Have a great summer. Hopefully you won't see me next year, and let's take it back to the studio. Thanks, Bailey. Up next, we have new information on a nearly two-year ATV mystery. And we'll tribute those who are leaving our news team. Now you see them, now you don't. What do we mean? Students at ATV have been trying to track down the stealthy Aggie Cats for almost two years. Britta Anderson is live outside to give us an update on the investigation. You know, um, Kelsey and Jessica, I'm out here at the shrub where we had our first Aggie cat sighting, but that was quite a few months ago. So we decided to get serious, catch up to those who take care of the cats, and make contact. Back up. Back up. Go backwards. Elusive Aggie cats have been roaming USU's campus for the last eight years. We're doing a story on them. Right there. That's where they feed. Oh, there's one there still. Oh no, it just ran away. <laughs> and ATV News has been trying to capture them on camera for the last two years. Like, this is like serious. Get the light, get the light. Look, they have little beds. From blurry nighttime sightings, to daylight pursuits. You would think with how little they are seen, there aren't many on campus, but there are a lot more than you'd expect. We're probably up into about the mid 70s in terms of numbers of cats. And what keeps them around? Bob. If you establish a feeding station, and you feed at the same time in the same place every day and only leave the food out for about an hour, they become habituated to showing up at that time. So after a while, they're all waiting for you. But Aggie Cats is more than simply feeding stray cats. We trap and uh, neuter and spay instead of trap and kill. And we release the cats back into their area. And then those cats uh, keep other cats out keep pests down. It originated with a pre-veterinary class who wanted to learn how to spay and neuter cats. And with a number of feral cats on campus, it created a perfect opportunity. And it later grew into a cat management program. And because the cats are wild, they like to stay hidden. Which means that to most students on campus, they remain a mystery. I wouldn't have really found out anything if I had not gone looking for it in the first place. The mystery is discoverable. You just have to kind of poke around a bit. The Aggie Cats program is working so well that the county is actually adopting the methods that they use. And if you're interested, which Kelsey, I know you are, 
you can actually be one of their volunteer feeders this summer. Just be sure to contact Whitney Milligan through the USU website. Back to you. Oh man, thanks. I'm going to have to get on that. I love my cats. Um, but it's great to finally have the mystery solved. And that feral Aggie cat you were holding looked kind of familiar to... As spring semester comes to an end, it is also the end for some here at ATV, as they move on to bigger and better things. Our own Jessica Black is one of them, along with two of our other seniors and one of USU's greatest. Just oh, so yeah. soft. <laughs> oh yeah, I've always wanted a little puppy. The broadcast or a dog journalism or department at USU will be a little different no, next year as we say goodbye to our three seniors this spring. I've been at Utah State for five years now. I've been in the journalism department for three. So I'm Jessica Black. I'm graduating May in the May, May 5th, um, and I'm getting my bachelor's. As weird as it is, I'm gonna miss ATV News. And I'm gonna I'm going to miss that that camaraderie that we have in class. I'm gonna miss like the family aspect of newscast. But ATV News isn't saying goodbye to just seniors this year. I've been around Dean for quite a bit of time and he definitely is probably one of the funniest guys around. For the last nine years, Dean Byrne has served students from this very office. He is loved and will be greatly missed by the students in the broadcast department at Utah State. Probably my favorite memory of Dean would have to be when I was producing ATV News and he went in to the studio where Bailey and Jess were anchoring and told them that we were six minutes light when he meant that we had six minutes left in the show. I will always remember Dean going into his weird diabetic things um, or the moment when Dean told us we were six minutes light on uh, ATV News. That was definitely memorable. My first day at In Video Basics because I was just not expecting that because like he walked in and like I remember sitting with a few other people and none of us knew him like we'd never seen him before and we're like who's this old guy? One of my favorite things to do it was when I walked into the apartment I love saying hi to Dean because I love the way that he says hello. He's like hello. It's going to be sad to see him, see him go from the department because he's such a fun guy and such a fun character. Our three seniors wanted to wish Dean one final goodbye. Dean, you know, you've been here for a while. You had surgery while I was here. And I hope that you get to go around in your trailer as much as you want and just travel the world or the United States in your trailer with Penny and you just have an awesome retirement. He cares about the students and he really does want us to do well. And that's just always had an impact on me. Well, Dean, it's been so much fun um, having you in Newscast, and I mean, you, yeah, you definitely deserve to take a break and just enjoy life because you've been working so hard and you've taught us so much. Dean, it's been four semesters with you, and they've been fabulous, but it is time for you to, to take some retirement because you and Penny need to, to get your motor home and ride into the sunset. I will always remember Dean. I'm Britta Anderson. And Courtney I'm Robinson. Black. Cash Rendezvous. We have had a great semester and we wish the best of luck to Dean Byrne and our seniors as they move on but leave their legacy behind. You know Jess, I am really going to miss you and all the other seniors but I know you guys are going to do great things. Yeah, we are. I'm going to miss you too. It's, it's, it's oh, going to be like a sad moment there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to keep in touch. We will. We will. Definitely. Yeah. Well, that's it for this semester. We'll see you next fall. I won't see you next fall, but have a great summer, Aggies, and good luck with finals. <laughs> 13, 12, 10, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, black.